Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you're doing very well this Sunday morning. Well, today we're going a little bit back into the Bible. We've learned all about Jesus and all about the promises that are fulfilled in Jesus. And now we're going to look back at actually some of those promises that were made in the Old Testament. And some of them we actually have already covered, like in the story of Abraham, like the promises made to Abraham. And you will remember that we spoke about several judges. Judges that were appointed to help out the Israelites when they cried out to God. And this one was when the Israelites were already in the promised land in Israel. Now one of the last judges that the Israelites had was called Samuel. Um, and today's passage is about a conversation between the Israelites and Samuel. And we're going to look at the Bible, of course, God's Word, God speaking to us whenever we read it. And we're going to look at a book in the Old Testament called 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verse 1 to 9. 1 Samuel 8, verse 1 to 9. And we read out of the New International Reader's Version, which you can found on, find on the Version app. So, let's hear what happens. When Samuel became old, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his oldest son was Joel. The name of his second son was Abijah. They served as judges at Beersheba. But his sons didn't live as he did. They were only interested in making money. They accepted money from people who wanted special favors. They made things that were wrong appear to be right. So all the elders of Israel gathered together. They came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, You are old. Your sons don't live as you do. So appoint a king to lead us. We want a king just like the kings all the other nations have. Samuel wasn't pleased when they said, give us a king to lead us. So he prayed to the Lord. The Lord told him, listen to everything the people are saying to you. You are not the one they have turned their backs on. I am the one they do not want as their king. They are doing just as they have always done. They have deserted me and served other gods. They have done that from time to time, from, from the time that I brought them up out of Egypt until this day. Now they are deserting you too. Let them have what they want, but give them a strong warning. Let them know what the king who rules over them will expect to be done for him. Now we'll re read from verse 10 to verse 18. Samuel told the people who were asking him for a king everything the Lord had said. Samuel told them, Here's what the king who rules over you will expect to be done for him. He will take your sons. He'll make them serve with his chariots and horses. They will run in front of his chariots. He'll choose some of your sons to be commanders of thousands of men. Some will be commanders of fifties. Others will have to plow the fields and gather his crops. Still others will have to make weapons of war and parts for his chariots. He'll also take your daughters. Some will have to make perfume. Others will be forced to cook and bake. He will take away your best fields and vineyards and olive groves. He'll give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and, the, and a tenth of your grapes. He'll give it to his officials and attendants. 
He will also take your male and female servants. He'll take your best cattle and donkeys. He'll use all of them any way he wants to. He will take a tenth of your sheep and goats. You yourselves will become his slaves. When that time comes, you will cry out for help because of the king you have chosen. But the Lord won't answer you at that time. Now, boys and girls, the Israelites, were they wrong to ask for a king? Not necessarily so, but the reason why they wanted a king was wrong. They said they wanted to be like all the other nations. And that's not how God wanted them to be. In fact, he wanted them to be separate from all the other nations, a holy nation, set apart. That's what holy means. Different from everybody else. Different in that the Lord is their king. And Samuel gets very upset with the people. And the Lord tells him, it's okay, give them what they want. But you have to warn them that the king I will give them will be like this. And you would have heard in the, in the passage that I read, the word that was repeated the most was take. Take, 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 take. This king that would be appointed would not serve the people, but he would take from them instead. And um, then the Lord also says that the people will become disappointed with this king because he just takes from them and they will cry out to God, but God will not answer them. So we wonder now, will God actually desert his people? But we shall see that that is not what will happen. So this king that God will give the Israelites will be called Saul. But after that, there will come a king, a man after God's own heart, a man called David. And David is actually one of the forefathers of Jesus. Out of David's kingly line comes Jesus, our Savior, who will die on a cross for our sins, satisfying the wrath of God and making us friends with one another and helping us to be in relationship with God. And that is very exciting. So boys and girls, that is it for today. We learn about the Israelites asking for a king. God says, it's okay, Samuel, you can give them what they want, but this is the warning. If you want a king like this, the king is going to take and the king is not going to want to serve his people. Okay, that's it for today. Have a lovely day and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh.